The Sound of Waves, Chapter 3. That night, Shinji attended the regular meeting of the Young Men's Association. This was the name now applied to what in ancient times was called the Sleeping House, then a dormitory system for the young, unmarried men of the island. Even now, many young men preferred to sleep in the association's drab hut on the beach rather than in their own homes. There, the youths hotly debated such matters as schooling and health, the ways of salvaging sunken ships and making rescues at sea, and the Lion and the Lantern festival dances, functions belonging to the young men of the village since ancient days. Thus, they felt themselves part of the communal life and found pleasure in that agreeable weight that comes from shouldering the burdens and duties of full-grown men. A wind was blowing from the sea, rattling the closed night shutters and making the lamp sway back and forth, now dim, now suddenly bright. From outside, the night sea came pressing very near them, and the roar of the tide was constantly revealing the unrest and might of nature as the shadows of the lamp moved over the cheerful faces of the young men. When Shinji entered the hut, one boy was kneeling on all fours under the lamp, having his hair cut by a friend with a pair of slightly rusty hair clippers. Shinji smiled and sat down on the floor against the wall, clasping his knees. He remained silent as usual, listening to what the others were saying. The youths were bragging to each other of the day's fishing, laughing loudly and heaping each other unstintingly with insults. One boy, who was a great reader, was earnestly reading one of the out-of-date magazines with which the hut was supplied. Another was engrossed, with no less enthusiasm, in a comic book. Holding the pages open with fingers whose knuckles were gnarled beyond his years, he would study some pages for two or three minutes at a time, before finally understanding the point and breaking into a loud guffaw. Here, for the second time, Shinji heard talk of the new girl. He caught a snatch of a sentence spoken by a snaggle-toothed boy who opened a big mouth to laugh and then said, That Hatsu, she's... The rest of the sentence was lost to Shinji in a sudden commotion from another part of the room, mixed with answering laughter from the group around the snaggle-toothed boy. Shinji was not at all given to brooding about things, but this one name, like a tantalising puzzle, kept harassing his thoughts. At the mere sound of the name, his cheeks flushed, and his heart pounded. It was a strange feeling to sit there motionless and feel within himself these physical changes that, until now, he had experienced only during heavy labour. He put the palm of his hand against his cheek to feel it. The hot flesh felt like that of some complete stranger. It was a blow to his pride to realise the existence of things within himself that he had never so much as suspected, and rising anger made his cheeks even more flaming hot. The young men were awaiting the arrival of their president, Yasuo Kawamoto. Although only 19, Yasuo was the son of a leading family in the village and possessed the power to make others follow him. Young as he was, he already knew the secret of giving himself importance and he always came late to their meetings. Opening the door with a bang, Yasuo now entered the room. He was quite fat and had inherited a red complexion from his tippling father. His face was naive enough in appearance, but there was a crafty look about his thin eyebrows. He spoke glibly, without any trace of the local dialect. Sorry to be late. Well then, let's not waste time. There are definite plans to be made for next month's projects. So saying, he sat down at the desk and opened a notebook. They could all see that he was in a great hurry about something. As decided at the last meeting, there's the business of... uh, holding a meeting of the Respect for Old Age Association, and also hauling stones for road repairs. Then there's the matter of cleaning the sewers to get rid of the rats. It's a request of the village assembly. We'll do this as usual uh, on a stormy day when the boats can't go out. Fortunately, rat catching can be done in any weather, and I don't believe the police will get after us even if we kill a few rats outside the sewers. There was general laughter and shouts of, you tell them, you tell them. Next, proposals were made to ask the school doctor to give them a talk on hygiene and to hold an oratorical contest. But the old style lunar calendar new year was just over and the youths were so fed up with gatherings that they were lukewarm to both proposals. 
So they turned themselves into a committee of the whole and sat in critical judgment on the merits of their mimeographed bulletin, The Orphan Island. Something called a quatrain by Verlaine had been quoted at the end of an essay in the last issue by the boy who liked books so much, and this now became the universal target for their jibes. I know not why my mournful soul flies the sea fitfully, fitfully, on restless, frantic pinions. What do you mean by that? Fitfully, fitfully. Fitfully, fitfully means fitfully, fitfully, that's what. Maybe it's a mistake for flitfully, flitfully. That's it. If you'd said it flies flitfully, flitfully, then that would have made some sense. Who's this Verlaine fellow, anyhow? One of the most famous French poets, that's who. And what do you know about French poets, eh? You probably got it all out of some popular song somewhere. Thus, the meeting had ended, as usual, in a give and take of insults. Wondering why Yasuo, the president, had been in such a hurry to leave, Shinji stopped one of his friends and asked him. Don't you know, the friend replied. He's invited to the party Uncle Terumiata's giving to celebrate his daughter's homecoming. Normally, Shinji would have walked home with the others as they talked and laughed. But now, hearing of the party to which in no case would he have been invited, he soon slipped away and walked alone along the beach toward the stone steps leading to Yashiro's shrine. Looking up at the village houses, built one above the other on a steep rise, he picked out the lights shining from the Miyata house. All the lights in the village came from the same oil lamps, but these looked somehow different, more sparkling. Even if he couldn't see the actual scene of the banquet, he could clearly imagine how the sensitive flame of the lamps there must be throwing flickering shadows from the girl's tranquil eyebrows and long lashes down onto her cheeks. Reaching the bottom of the stone steps, Shinji looked up the flight of stairs, dappled with shadows of pine branches. He began to climb, his wooden clogs making a dry clicking sound. There wasn't a soul to be seen around the shrine, and the light in the priest's house was out. Even though he had just bounded up 200 steps, Shinji's thick chest wasn't labouring in the least when he reached the shrine. He stopped before it, filled with a feeling of reverence. He tossed a 10 yen coin into the offertory chest, Thinking a moment, he tossed in ten yen more. The sound of his clapped hands calling the god's attention sounded through the shrine garden, and Shinji prayed in his heart. God, let the seas be calm, the fish plentiful, and our village more and more prosperous. I'm still young, but in time let me become a fisherman among fishermen. Let me have much knowledge in the ways of the sea, in the ways of fish, in the ways of boats, in the ways of the weather. In everything, let me be a man with surpassing skill in everything. Please protect my gentle mother and my brother, who's still a child. When my mother enters the sea in the diving season, please protect her body somehow from all the many dangers. Then, there's a different sort of request I'd like to make. Someday, let even such a person as me be granted a good-natured, beautiful bride. Say someone like Terukichi Miyata's returned daughter. The wind came blowing and the pine branches set up a clamour. It was a gust of wind that raised solemn echoes even in the dark interior of the shrine. Perhaps it was the sea god accepting the boy's prayer. Shinji looked up at the star-filled sky and breathed deeply. Then he thought, But mightn't the gods punish me for such a selfish prayer? <laughs>